Hi, I'm Shane, this is Game Dev Academy, and you want to learn Maya fast. No problem! In the next 20 minutes, I'll show you how to go from this to this without any prior knowledge or experience using Maya. I promise this will be fast, so let's get started, shall we? Okay, so this is Maya. What you need to know right away is that this is your viewport. You have some common tools and view presets on the left hand side. Shelf along the top, which contains shortcuts to commonly used tools and the channel box to the right where you can change some of the properties of your 3D meshes. We'll cover these in more detail as we move along. Now it's time to create your first shape. Click on the cube icon from the poly modeling shelf and as if by magic, a cube appears at the center of the grid. Let's resize it. On the left of the screen, I'll click on the scale tool which brings up these manipulators. Click and drag on these to resize the cube to be about the same size as the grid. First on the X axis, and then the same on the Z axis. Now, if you look in the channel box, you can see the name of the mesh. Let's just click here and rename it to base. And you can also see the size of the mesh under scale X, Y, and Z. Let's neaten this up by setting the size to exactly 24 on the scale X and Z, and we'll leave it at one on the Y axis. Now, I just want to adjust my view a little, so we'll cover movement in Maya. You need a three button mouse to be able to use Maya properly because 3D movement is handled by holding the Alt key and by pressing one of the three mouse buttons. Alt and left button for tumble, Alt and middle button for tracking and Alt and right button for dolly. So I'll just use a combination of these three camera controls to position my view so that it looks like this. Make sure you're comfortable with movement before moving on to the next part of the exercise. Okay, we're off to a good start. Let's add a little more detail with some floorboards. Let's create another cube, name it floorboard, and we'll need to move the base down so we can see the new cube. Click on the base to select it, and then click on the move tool. You'll see three arrows showing which directions you can move the mesh in. I'm going to grab the green one to move the base down below our new cube. It's a little difficult to see the new cube, so I'll just click up here to show the wireframe, and also click here to hide the grid. That's better. Now let's edit our floorboard. Select it, resize it, and then move it down a little so it's just about flush with the base. Then move it across to the near edge like this. To make this look a little less boxy, we're going to bevel the edges. With the floorboard still selected, click on this icon here to bevel it. A little settings box appears. I don't think we need to change the fraction for this one, but we will add another segment by changing this number to two. Finally, we'll duplicate the floorboard across the whole of the base. Make sure it's selected, press Ctrl and D on your keyboard. You'll see by the naming of the mesh that it has been duplicated. Use the move tool to move it across so that it's just about touching the original floorboard. Now I'll show you some witchcraft. Press Shift and D to do a duplicate special. This will create another duplicate, but also move it based on what we did with the previous one. Press Shift and D until you've covered the base in floorboards. One final thing before we move on, select the base, bevel it and set the segments to two and the fraction to 0 0.2 to keep the overall look consistent. Next up, we need to create our walls. For this, we'll also need to start with a cube and rename it to walls. Then we'll resize and move it to be something like this. And finally, we need to move it over to the far corner of the room. Now we need to turn this into walls by selecting some of the faces. To do that, we can open the modeling toolkit like this and then click here for face selection. Now we select these two faces by clicking on this one and then whilst holding the shift key, clicking on the other. And we're going to extend them by extruding them. To extrude, we click on this icon here on the shelf and we'll see the settings for the extrusion pop up. If we try to just pull the new faces out on the Z axis, it goes a little bit weird. So let's undo that by pressing Ctrl and Z. And this time we'll turn keep faces together off and then pull the faces out. That's better. Now we just want to make the walls a little more interesting to look at. And to do that, we first need to add a couple of edge loops. To do that, you need the multi-cut tool, which can be found here. And in order to add a whole edge loop, you need to hold the control key and mouse over one of the vertical edges. Then use left click to add the edges. I'll put one here and one more here. Perfect. I'll just turn off the multi-cut tool by selecting the arrow tool like this 
And now let's finish this off by selecting all of the faces on the top and bottom sections like this. Remember to hold the shift key to add more faces to your selection. Once they're selected, extrude them. I'll press Ctrl and E this time to extrude and then increase the thickness by clicking on the word thickness here and dragging to the right. To round out this step, we need to move to edge mode, which is over here in our modeling toolkit. And I'm going to double click on the edges to get the whole edge loop for these edges running horizontally. And then these ones on the corners. Remember to hold shift to add to your selection. Now with all these edges selected, I'll press Ctrl and B to bevel and then set the fraction to 0.15 and the sections to two. And that is looking pretty fantabulous. To make the walls even more interesting, we will now add a window. The first thing we need to do for that is to make a hole in the wall. First, make sure you are in face selection mode, then select this face on the inside of the room and the corresponding face on the outside of the room. Check that you have both selected and then extrude them. Now, change to the scale tool and resize the new faces like this. Then move them over to the side using the move tool. Once you're happy with the size and position, hit the delete key to remove the selected faces and create the hole. We can now see that the wall is hollow, so we'll cover that over with a window frame. For the window frame, we're going to make another cube. Click the channel box tab over here to the right and name the cube frame. I can then move it over to be within the window opening. I'll then click on the modeling toolkit tab so I can put it into face selection mode to resize it so I can line it up with the window opening more precisely. I'll move each of the outer faces like this so that they fall just inside the opening we created. Next, I'll get the front face and pull it out in front of the wall a little and then do the same with the face on the back. Now, to turn it into a frame, we will select the front and back faces and delete them. Now we'll put the remaining faces back into object selection mode, perform an extrusion with Ctrl and E, and then increase the thickness until we get a nice thick frame. For the finishing touch, we'll go back into object selection mode, use Ctrl and B to add a bevel to all the edges, increase the segments to two, and then set the fraction down to something like 0.3. To add a little more detail, we'll separate the window into four panes. So let's grab another cube, rename it to separator, move it over to the center of the window opening and just make it a tiny bit smaller. Now comes the clever bit. Put the new cube into face selection mode and select the four outer faces like this. Hit Ctrl and E to perform an extrude. Turn keep faces together off and then drag out on the Z axis. Make sure you're happy with the positioning and then bang a bevel on it. Et voila, we have ourselves a sexy looking window. The room is now complete, but the exposed floorboards and lack of furniture make it look like a drug den. So let's add some furniture, shall we? We'll start with a bookcase. You know the drill by now, create a cube. We'll wait until we finish before we rename this one. Resize it so you get a shape like this, bevel it, up the segments to two, and then hit Ctrl and D to duplicate it, and then move it up. And then let's make one more shelf. Now we need the side, so let's take a shelf. Duplicate it, and now I'll introduce you to the Rotate tool, which is accessed by clicking this icon here. You can use any of the circles to rotate the shelf. I recommend using only one at a time, otherwise you'll end up with a wonky bookshelf. So I'll rotate on the Z-axis, which is the blue one. And a little top tip here is to hold J on your keyboard as you do this, to snap the rotation to 15 degree increments like this. And then I'll just rotate it by 90 degrees like so. All you need to do then is move it off to the side, make sure you're happy with the height and then duplicate it over to the other side. To finish this off, we will select all five pieces and then go to mesh combine to make it behave as one object. All we need to do now is name it bookcase, dial in the size and move it into place. Next, we'll create a desk in much the same way. First, take a cube, get it to a good desktop size and then hit it with a bevel. Let's mix things up for the legs and create them from a shape that isn't a cube. Make a cylinder and then you can make it thinner by scaling it on the X and Z axes at the same time by clicking and dragging this green square like so. Once you're happy with the girth of the leg, get the height right and then move it into place. Once you've got the height dialed in, duplicate it and move it over to the back corner. Now select both legs, duplicate and move over to the other side. To finish it off, select all the pieces, combine them and name it desk. Move it into position and that's the desk complete. Now we'll add some more details to the room, starting with a painting for the wall. 
Let's make a cube, call it painting and get it into a nice thin rectangular shape. Now go to face selection mode and select the front face. Extrude it and add an offset of about 0.2. That gives us the frame and now we can extrude again and move the face back a little. We'll save the beveling for now and just put it into object selection mode and move it into place. That's the painting done for now, but we're not really finished with it because it will make a great starting point for our monitor. So let's duplicate the painting and move it out into the open so it's easier to work on. We'll rotate it 90 degrees, remember to hold J to turn on rotation snapping, and then we'll make it a touch smaller and a little wider. I'll just move it a little more out into the open as we will now be working around the back of the mesh. We now need to go into face selection mode and select the face on the back of the monitor. Using Ctrl and E I'll extrude it and use the scale tool to turn the new face into a little square and move it towards the bottom like this. Make sure it's not too wide, and with the same face selected we will extrude again and pull the face out a little. Next we need to select this face here on the underside and extrude it down by about this much. We just need to do one more little extrusion going down so we can make the base. Let's select these smaller faces we just created on the two sides and extrude them out a little. The bit we need to do now is select these three faces on the front and extrude them out a little. Now you can put it into object mode, give it a cheeky little bevel and then move it into place. And now is also a good time to go back and bevel the painting. One final thing before we move on to the chair, let's make a rug. So it's a cube, call it rug, make it a rug shape and put it in a rug place. To give it a more interesting shape, we'll go into edge selection mode, select these four edges on the corners and then use bevel. We'll move the segments up to 10 and the fraction to 0.9. Now go to face selection, select this big face on the top, extrude it and increase the offset. This will allow us to add two colors when we add materials later on. To finish the rug, go to edge selection, double click on one of these edges to select the whole edge loop and bevel it. Set the segments to 2 and the fraction to whatever you think looks good. Put it back into object selection mode and we're done. I've just realised I've forgotten to rename the monitor so I'll just get that done too. Now that we have a desk we will create a chair. The trickiest part of the chair is the base but I have a cool trick to make it easy. First we will need a cylinder. We need to change the properties of this cylinder in the channel box by clicking here under inputs and changing the subdivisions axis to 5. Now we need to resize the cylinder to be about this size and shape, then in face selection mode select the faces around the outside of the shape. Now you can extrude them. Make sure keep faces together is turned off and pull the new faces out on the Z axis. Add an offset of about 0.1 and then you can change to the move tool and lower these faces a little. Now we need to select these faces on top, extrude them, add an offset, extrude again and then move up. Now we can pop this back into object mode. For the seat we will take a cube, move it up and scale it into shape. Next we can select this face at the back and extrude it back a little. Then we can select this new face on top, extrude that up and then move it back a little to make it look like a backrest. Now we can go back into object selection mode and bevel the two pieces we have made. The final part is to create a new cylinder, scale it down, rotate it by 90 degrees and then position and duplicate it to create the wheels. With that done you can select all pieces of the chair, combine them and then put the chair in place. Don't forget to rename it before you move on. For the last of the modelling we will create some small details for the room beginning with a keyboard for the computer. We'll keep this simple so we can make it quickly beginning with a new cube. Rename it to keyboard and then move it over to the desk and resize it into a good size for a keyboard. Now select this edge on the front and move it down to make the shape a little more interesting. Now we'll use the multi-cut tool and holding the control key we will add an edge loop over to the far side. Now we need to move into face selection mode so we can select the two top faces, extrude them, turn keep faces together off and then add an offset of about 0.2. Now we'll extrude one more time, increase the thickness a little and then add another small offset. Move back into object selection mode, add a bevel and make sure you're happy with the position. Nice one. Now we'll quickly create a book. Make a new cube and call it book. Now use the scale tool to make it look nice and booky. Then select these three faces and extrude. We'll add an offset of about 0.06 to make a cover and then extrude again and set the thickness to something like minus 0.05. To finish it off we'll pop it back into object mode and then bevel it up real nice. 
Then stick it over on the bookcase for later. Okay, we're nearly done with the modeling now. Let's just add an empty mug to the desk. Create a new cylinder, go to face selection mode and then select all of the faces on top. Here's a tip. If you hold the tab key, you can click and drag to select multiple faces like I'm doing here. With the top faces selected, extrude, add an offset and then extrude again and move down. Now go to edge selection mode, double click on these edges, making sure to hold shift to get all three edge loops and then you can bevel them. To finish this off, we need a handle. Go to create, polygon primitives and choose pipe. Move and rotate it so it's alongside the rest of the mug like this. It's a little too chunky, so to fix that, make sure you have the channel box open and then click on polypipe one under inputs. Here are some additional settings for the shape and we'll change thickness to 0.3. That's perfect. We just need to scale the shape so that the thickness is more consistent. Now move to face selection mode, select half the faces like this and then press the delete key to remove them. Change back to object selection mode, move and scale it so it looks like a handle and then hit it with a bevel. The last thing we need to do is combine the two pieces and then move and scale the mug into place on the desk. That is all of the modeling complete. Well done. With the modeling complete, it's now time to make this look a little less 50 shades of gray by adding some colored materials. In order to do this, the first thing we will need to do is open the Hypershade, which is where we make materials in Maya. You can access the Hypershade by clicking this icon up here. Here's what it looks like. Here's where our completed materials live. Here's a list of materials we can create. If I just select Lambert 1, you can see over here is a preview of the material. And down here, you can change the properties of materials. This bit here is a workspace, and you can also use this to edit materials. I'm going to add a viewport by clicking on Window and then Viewport and then you can just click and drag it to dock it in the Hypershade. I'm going to dock it just here. Then I'll just press five on my keyboard to put it into shaded mode. I'll also hide the grid in this view so it's not in my way. Okay, let's create our first material then. We'll click Lambert over here to create a new Lambert material. I will rename it to light brown over here. And then I'll click on this gray rectangle here for the color picker. I'll set the color to a yellowy brown like this. Now we can assign this to the objects in the scene, which is done by clicking and dragging using the middle mouse button like this. You can add the material to multiple meshes at once by selecting them and then holding the right mouse button on the material and choosing add material to selection. Now let's make another one. Start by clearing the workspace by clicking this icon, make a new Lambert, call it dark brown and then click on the color picker and choose a shade of brown that you like. Then you can add the new material to these meshes. Now repeat this process to create a couple more materials. I created a white and a dark gray and assign them to these meshes. We'll do the other materials in the next step because all of the remaining objects have more than one material that we need to apply. So once you've gotten to this stage, you can move on to the next part of the tutorial. Now that you've applied material to some of the objects in the room, it's time to add some color to the remaining objects. But this time we want to add two or more material to the objects instead of just one. We'll start with the rug, and for this we'll begin with the yellow colour. So I'll make a new Lambert, call it yellow, make it yellow, and finally assign it to the rug. Now for the second colour, we'll clear the workspace, make another new Lambert. This one will be named red, and we'll set the colour to red. Now we need to put the rug into face selection mode. I'll do this by holding the right mouse button over the rug mesh, and then choosing face from the menu that appears. I can then select the face in the center and then hold the right mouse button down over the red material and choose assign material to selection. And there you have it, one object with two different materials. Let's do it one more time to make sure you've got it sorted. Let's do the book. First we'll clear the workspace and then make a new Lambert. Name it green and we'll make it a nice green color. Now we'll move the book off the shelf so we can see all the way around it and then we need to add the green material. Now I need to get it into face selection mode and then select these faces that represent the pages. It can be a little tricky around the bevels, but once you're done, you can assign the white material you should have created for the mug to those faces. Then you can put it back on the shelf. All that's left to do now is to make and apply the following materials to the rest of the room, including the walls. Once you've got everything colored in, you'll be ready to move on and we'll get the lighting set up. Now everything has a material applied, we need to light our scene. Right now we're viewing this scene using default lighting. This is pretty flat and boring, so we'll create our own sexy lighting. Let's start by closing the hypershade and then we can turn off the wireframe in the view panel. Now, I want you to press seven on your keyboard to go into lighting mode and you'll see it all goes black because we don't have any lights in the scene. Let's create our first light then. From the top menu, go to Arnold, lights, and then choose physical sky. 
This creates a big black sphere around the scene, but it hasn't really made things any easier to see. Unfortunately, this light doesn't really help until we start rendering the scene. So let's get rendering. We'll go to Renderer from the panel menu and change from Viewport 2.0 to Arnold. This little window will appear and then we can click on the red play button to start the scene rendering. As you can see, the light now appears, but I want it to look like it's streaming through the window. So I'll rotate the sky dome like this. Perfect. Now we have some light coming through the window. The light seems a little dark to me though, so I'll open the attribute editor by clicking on the tab to the right of the screen where I can change the intensity of the light to 5. I'd also like the shadows to be a little softer, so I'll just move to the AI Physical Sky tab in the attribute editor and set the sun size to 3. If we deselect the sky dome, you'll also see we get a nice looking background colour. This is a nice start then, but other than the bit of light coming through the window, the rest of the room looks too dark and gloomy. Let's fix that by adding another light. We'll go back to Arnold and lights, but this time we'll create an area light. I will move it up and rotate it with the single line facing down, so it will be going in the right direction. And finally, I will make it bigger to fill more of the room. It's not really doing much, so I'll go over to the attribute editor and set the intensity to something like 300. That's looking better. I just want to add one final touch, and that's to make it look like light is coming from the monitor. To do that, we'll make another area light, rotate it, move it, and scale it so that it's about the same size and same position as the screen. Now, so I can actually see what the light is doing, I'll set the intensity to 100, and I'll click on the colour picker so I can give the light a slight blue tinge. Just for one final flourish, I'll duplicate this light, rotate it around 180 degrees so the monitor really looks nice and bright. Okay, that looks nice. That'll do for the lighting. Let's move on to setting up the camera. For the final part of this quick introduction to Maya, we will create a new camera and set it up like a 2.5D view. In order to do that, let's first click on Create, go to Cameras and choose Camera. Next, we'll make it an orthographic camera, which will give it that 2.5D quality I'm looking for. So in the Attribute Editor, I'll scroll down to Orthographic Views and then tick the box for Orthographic. Now we want to actually look through the new camera, so I'll go to Panels, Orthographic and choose New Camera. Here's what the camera can currently see. Not exactly what we're looking for, so I'll make a few more changes. Open the channel box and then set the rotate Y value to 45, and then set the rotate X to minus 20. This is now at the right angle, but for me it's chopping everything in half. This just means we need to move the camera back. I'll go to Panels and then Perspective, and then choose Persp to select the original 3D camera. Now I can move our new camera back so that it's not intersecting the geometry of the scene anymore. Now if I go back to viewing the scene with a new orthographic camera, nothing is being chopped in half. And the last thing to do is to position the camera so I can see everything. And that's everything! You can, if you want, add some more details like filling the bookshelf or adding another painting, or you can even create some new models of your own. This was only intended to be a quick introduction to Maya, and if you found that this went a little too quickly for you, or you want a more detailed introduction to Maya, then click on the link on screen or in the video description to check out my in-depth Maya for Beginners tutorial, which is available on both YouTube and Skillshare. If you found this tutorial helpful and want to help me make more videos like this, then definitely smash the hell out of the like button, but you could also consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. Link is in the description. I am also working on another video which will be a quick introduction to Blender, much like this one was for Maya, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one when it drops. Thanks so much for watching, I've been Shane for Game Dev Academy and I'll see you in the next class.